Okay, time for another quick Sandman review. The World's End is a Sandman book that is really, really one of those books where we just get a bunch of narratives and we don't really know what's going on. We have to piece it together uh, and kind of piece together a whole story and we don't really know if there's a whole story or not or if it's just supposed to be like a side story. I'm not exactly sure, but it's one of those things where it really makes me think. Is this one of those stories where, like I said before in my last review, one where we get certain glimpses into characters' lives just to see the reality of the world and then pull back without knowing the complete story, without knowing their entire life and without ever coming to them again? Is it one of those stories or is it supposed to be one overarching narrative? Now in the background we do see an overarching narrative play out and that's pretty cool but that's in the next book so I'm not gonna talk about that here. Now the first little bit is kind of not that interesting. Uh, it is what it is but you know it's just setting up stuff. We'll see what happens next time. The second story was really really cool because it really did apply a lot of ideas and a lot of narrative uh, themes into what we were reading and we didn't really see it directly but there were certain glimpses and Neil Gaiman is brilliant at this he doesn't say these beautiful uh, brilliant themes but he sort of implies them and certain characters kind of hint at them and uh, talk about them in other ways but he doesn't go full out and say some of these things and this is one of those stories that's exactly like that and I love it for it it introduces this really interesting symbolic uh, roughly irrational idea that just takes you away. In fact, I'd rate that story on its own, maybe four four stars or something. It's really, really cool. It gives you a very interesting idea of what Sandman is about. The second story that I'm going to talk about, skipping obviously the first part, which is kind of just a prologue, we do get to this fairy story that I'm not a big fan of. I thought that it wasn't very good. Now, this runs more like a normal action narrative than anything else, and it does include a few themes, but they're a little bit on the nose, and they don't seem to hint at anything grander or larger than uh, before. And the theme that I do get out of it isn't that good either. I have very, very high expectations for Neil Gaiman. He always seems to nail the great thematic ideas and really nails putting something behind a cloak of simple beauty. And this story just doesn't do it for me. I think I'd give this a one star. The third story is the one about uh, going on a ship and sailing and uh, I wasn't a big fan of this one either. I just never thought about it again. It's one of those stories, again, like Neil Gaiman doesn't really have anything big behind the scenes. However, kind of skimming through it, I can see that he was trying to hint at something. It was too indirect and we didn't really get a huge picture or it wasn't a very good theme to begin with. So I'm not a big fan of this one either. I just thought, while it was a good story on surface level, it, it tries to hint at something thematically that I just can't put my finger on and usually when you see something thematic that you can't understand usually you try to dig deeper and you can always have a sense that tells you to dig deeper that's what it was like for the last book book seven where you could feel that there was something bigger and greater but you couldn't quite put your finger on it and so you thought and thought and thought this one isn't like that you can see something that's probably bigger behind it but it doesn't seem as obvious and it doesn't really dig at you this one's maybe a two star then we get to the Prez story oh this one's so so cool the golden boy I love the story um, it isn't because it has a brilliant uh, theme behind it but but it's because it's just such a fun story. It's like a fairy tale. I can't really see too much great cool stuff behind it. I believe that this is a superhero on uh, DC, just otherwise. Um, I, I just don't see that there is much thematic stuff behind it. There surely is some, uh, especially throughout the end. And you, you can see it very, very clearly. And you can see it uh, involving Smiley Guy. But overall, it's just a super fun story. I love the idea of just having something so out there and so weird and so uh, odd and just kind of seeing how it plays out. It's just super fun for me and I like this quite a bit because of that. So I rated it three stars. The next story is Ceraments. This one is very, very weird because it's just gotta be one of those stories that people talk about a lot. Similar to the Midsummer Night's Dream story from an earlier Sandman book, this is one of those that just kind of meta. So it's a story uh, about people telling stories, which is within a story, which is in itself within a story, which is in, in a story, and then it's within this story. So it's like so many layers of story. Uh, the thing is, that doesn't make it any good. It, it doesn't really do anything for me, even though it is pretty cool. Uh, it, seems, it seems like he either ran out of ideas and so just had other people in the stories tell stories or something like that. I, I couldn't really understand uh, what was going on. And I can see like some thematic stuff peeking out, but it's not that good. Overall, this was just incredibly wordy. I couldn't keep track and I didn't have any reason to believe that this was more than it was. It wasn't that interesting and it really wasn't that thematic. One star I think. Then I'm not sure exactly what the next uh, issue is or the last issue but it involves this and is everything around this situation. Um, This was the most interesting thing within the whole book. Easily. Easily. Nothing touched it. Because it was an idea of what was going on behind the scenes. We knew something was going on behind the scenes but we didn't know what. And then we finally get to the point where we're starting to learn about what's actually going on in the background of all of these stories. And when we see it it's so, so vague that we could not possibly understand. And I knew something was definitely huge. Everybody knows that. You can see it in, in, in what's going on. Something is huge, something is changing, but you don't know what it is. 
And that's the cool and interesting thing. You can't figure out what it is until later. And I tried to Google this, but I'm so, so lucky that the comments in the first question that I found uh, involving this said that spoilers ahead, like huge spoilers. So this is huge spoilers. Don't even look this up. You'll figure it out later on for sure. This is one of those things where it just hugely, hugely piqued my interest. Like what is going on? Because it seems so huge, so giant. And it's just kind of seeing the background of this. And I think that that's what Neil Gaiman was trying to go for. Neil Gaiman has really created a mythos around this. And it's really important that we continue to go back and meet other people and see how they view these small things that have happened in this great overarching narrative. And I think that that's really cool. Um, I don't know exactly how good it is because of that, but it's a three stars for sure. Even though it doesn't really have that great meaning, it has great meaning within the story. And it was really, really cool and really awesome to read. So that's my entire review for Sandman uh, book eight worlds and Sandman is obviously so, so cool. And I really love what he's trying to do with it. And I, I, I love reading it either way, but it does have a lot of downsides compared to the other books. So that's my review. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this review, uh, please leave a like and leave a comment in the comment section down below and uh, subscribe if you want to see more reviews just like this. Also, my Goodreads is in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.